Hello, everybody. Yes, I live. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry, you guys. I was sick. I could barely move. Oh, my God. But anyway, I am so like, let alone like talk or do a let's play or anything like that. Like, literally, it started right after I finished the Subasa stream. But anyway, I have a lot to catch you guys up on. Hello, welcome, Matt. Oh, wait, Apparition, totally. April Romsh, uh, Midnight Blitz, Nagels, Jichan, and Eternal Magician. Oh, and Michael Pierre. Hello, welcome. Woo! <laughs> I was so sick, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, hello, T. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I need a magic spell to cure me. And hello, Weebo. Oh, God, yeah. I was just uh, in a really bad spot. I could barely fucking move. Uh, hello, Zia-san. <laughs> That's what my SO said, uh, Matt. They said, like... You're streaming for five hours. <laughs> That's why it's like, your immune system's like, it's okay, it's okay. No, 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 it's fine. I just sometimes get sick like that. But okay, so let me catch up you guys on top. First of all, you might have noticed that the screen looks a little bit different. Hello, James. Yeah, it has been way too long. Hello, Sailor Moon. Oh my God, it has been way, way, way too long. The screen uh, looks a little bit different. That's because I am using... The version that even um, 07 mod people recommended me to use is called Umineko Project. Hello, Antra. Hello, Zekuto. Welcome to the stream. Wow, everybody's here. Hello, Truths and Falsehoods. Uh, this is called Umineko Project. This version of Umineko has been in the works literally 10 years. And uh, it was just finished at the end of last year while I was starting episode five. So for the last three episodes of Umineko, we are gonna basically be using the prime ultimate version of Umineko you could possibly have. As you can see by the menu here, uh, this is uh, <laughs> has all eight episodes in it. It's a version with all eight episodes in it. Oh, well, thanks, Ramsh. I don't know, so, some people get really impatient and things like, you know, like, <laughs> oh, thank you, Ramsh. I appreciate that. And uh, so, yeah, these guys have been working on this forever. And it is just, and uh, one thing that it does have, they did do one through four a while ago, but they just finished five through eight, Weibo. And um, yeah, they put an incredible amount of work into this version. They just finished it. I spent actually a good part of the last few days, in addition to being sick and dead, uh, downloading it and uh, getting it set up. And uh, one thing it does have, which I want you guys to vote on, is lip sync. And that is that the sprites, the mouths of the sprites, actually move like they were in an anime uh, when they talk, when the characters speak. Now, I know not everybody likes this, so I have it currently set to off. At least I hope I do. But um, if you guys want me to turn that on, because I don't mind either way. I personally think it would be cool, but I can live without it. I know some people get, get turned off by it. If you want it on, I will turn it on for the next stream. Vote on it in a uh, poll. Uh, there, I put a straw poll in the, uh, in the description. So if you guys want to open up the description and um, vote in that poll. So yeah. And uh, whichever one um, which gets the most votes I will use for the next stream and beyond. So uh, oh my god when you, with that you guys last time yep please vote in the link in the description. Last time, holy shit, did a lot happen. Oh my god, Battler becoming the golden sorcerer. The new game master. He's got to be able to revive Beatrice, right? Because Beatrice revived him so many times during the question arcs. I I've seen what it looks like, and I do like it. Yeah, the 
I've heard that the I haven't really taken a look at the thumbnail in detail, and I know that the characters in it appear right away in the beginning of the episode, so it should be fine. So don't worry about spoilers too much. I know nothing about what's going to happen. I will just say that episode six of Higurashi was my favorite uh, episode of Higurashi, and on its own, probably one of my favorite visual novels of all time. <laughs> just to kill him again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, yeah that's right, Ramj. And um, so hopefully Battler can revive her because he has her powers now. So let's get started. I can't wait. I think we spent way too long on introductions. Episode 6, Dawn of the Golden Witch. That That's a good sign. Good morning. Is at last time for the curtain to rise on Battler Sama's game. Let's observe the fight from the opposite side of the chessboard. Can Battler Sama succeed in playing the demanding role of the game master? There is no longer any difficulty level. At this point, these are not hints, but a confession. Oh, wow. Oh my god, Chi chan Let's see what's gonna go on. You ready, guys? I am so hyped. Hello, Cereal. Huh, that, that's an interesting little... Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is all new stuff from the... Um... A beautiful glow shone in from the skylight over the Grand Cathedral. By the way, please tell me if my voice is too loud or the music is too loud or too soft or vice versa. Because it's a new program, new sound and everything. So uh, the sound settings are going to be different. So please tell me. Thank you. The place was somehow different from the way it had been during the witch's trial. The decoration has changed. The decorations had changed. Several pleasantly sparkling white ribbons that adorned it were thin like razors, but they trailed beautifully in the air. Flowers were arranged all over in a way that would make any place look cheerful. <laughs> Jichan is waiting for something, and I am just kind of really in such trepidation here. It was like how a single drop of impure water can spoil an entire cask of wine. Just the presence of those flowers those ribbons, and the red carpet that ran down the center of the room. Made it hard to believe that this was the same place Ushirmi and Natsuki had been falsely accused of a crime. It had truly become a wedding chapel. WHAT?! 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 WHAT THE F- Oh, wow! Okay, so... Her voice is pretty deep. Ah, uh, let's see. Love is generous. Love is merciful. Love does not envy. It does not boast. Hello, Eliomi. Welcome to the street. What the fuck is going on? What the wait? What? Are, what? Are, what are they talking about? Wait. What the, are you? Wait. 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 What? Wait, wait. Hold on. Did that? No. Wait. I. Oh God. Wait, did that really say wedding chat? Wait, did I read that correctly? Did I read that? I didn't want wet. How the fuck? Oh god! Those these words, spoken by two demons who seem to be in charge of the gathering, were part of a ceremony for making an oath of love before the eyes of God. Are you fucking serious? Wait, what? 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 Wait, wait, wait! Uh, no way! No fucking way! No way! 
Of course, in this wedding celebrated by demons, there was no priest in sight. Instead, there stood the witch who controls miracles. Oh god, if it's Burncastle. Oh god, what's going on? In sickness and in health. Yeah, a wife's true job is to be supportive in times of sickness. What? What the actual fuck? Wait, no, 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 Fuck you! Oh god, Bird, this is your doing! I fuck you! Oh god, what? No fucking way! Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Isn't that right, Erica? What the actual fuck? Oh, what the actual fuck? No fucking way! No, 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 no! That was a fucking meme! No! Hello, oh, 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 what the actual fuck? Yes. Bang Master! Ah, Erica, the greatest waifu of all the time who ever lived! <laughs> no! Oh, God. Erica, I swear I will rip you to fucking shreds. If you were marrying, who the meme said you were? Oh God! No! 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 And that looks good on you. What a fitting outfit her one is called. Her one was conquered the bridegroom. <laughs> I swear, Erica, if you are marrying who I fucking think you are. <laughs> I'm honored, my master! The bride standing on the carpeted path was Bruto Erica. The groom's face couldn't be seen. Oh god! No, no, no! No! Oh god, Erica, you are so fucking dead! You are so dead! Oh god, I am gonna fucking murder you! I'm gonna murder you again and again and again and again and again and again and again! <laughs> Until I can forgive you! <laughs> oh god! The bride's outfit certainly was a pure white wedding dress. Her veil represented both the white of God's blessings and the white of a demon's cruelty. A great many goat nobles, witches, and demons were gathered for this wedding. If only their heads hadn't been those of goats, it would have probably seemed a very refined crowd worthy of this great cathedral. I'd expect no less of you, Bernie Bones. The stuff you managed to think of is always so twisted. A wife supporting a railing husband. Isn't that a lovely story? It suits you well, Erica. I agree, Michael Pierce. She is good as a villain. Oh god, I fucking swear! I fucking swear! I fucking swear! And congratulations to you too, Mr. Groom. At that point, Burncastle stares straight into the groom's eyes. God, she has her troll face on! Oh god! The groom didn't answer. Oh god. 
Oh god, no, 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 no. His eyes were gray. His lips would mutter something from time to time, but no one could tell if the words meant anything. Hey, are you listening? You people? She spoke to the groom in, in the plural. Hello, bats. Oh my god. Of course, there was only one groom. And of course, the gray-eyed groom didn't answer. No! No! Fuck you! Oh, you are dead! You are dead, bitch! You are dead! You are so fucking dead! You have no idea how fucking dead you are! You are deader than dead! Beyond dead! Oh god, when I get my hands on you, I'm going to freaking strangle you! And then for you again, and the freaking guillotine again and 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 again! And maybe until then, I'll forgive you! Ferudoic! Oh, you are so fucking dead! Oh my god, you are dead of the dead is dead of dead deads of dead! Oh my fucking god! Are you? Oh god! Oh my fucking god! No! No, 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 no! You are dead! Oh god! You are dead! No way! You are so fucking dead, Erica! I'm gonna fucking strangle you! I fucking swear. Oh, what kinds of grisly deaths have I cooked up for you? How about a shooting? No, that's too simple. How about poisoning? No, that's too simple. How about shooting and poisoning at the same time? No, 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 no. How about water torture, shooting and poisoning at the same time? No, 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 no. How about guillotine, water torture, shooting, poisoning at the same time? No, no, no. How about being skinned alive, water torture, guillotine, electrocution, drowning? Shooting and poisoning at the same time! I've got a list to go through! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you! Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Don't worry, okay, battler son? Oh my god. He's being controlled! I know this is not the real battler! This cannot be the real battler! He has to be being controlled! Oh god. This is like a fucking. Oh god, this is a, like a fucking Disney movie, isn't it? This is like a fucking Disney movie. This is like the fucking Little Mermaid. <gasps> this is the Little Mermaid, isn't it? This is the fucking Little Mermaid. Oh my god, Beato, you're gonna come up there and kill the wicked sea witch and have Battler Spiker in the friggin' fat ass stomach with his golden truth. Come on! <laughs> This got to be the fucking Little Mermaid. Oh, God. It's a fucking Disney movie. I know it's got to be. It's okay. I'll just take everything you are. And trample it into the ground. Dead, Erica. 
Oh god! Oh god. Oh my god, I think I have a headache. Oh god. Oh my god, you think the voices on the game's end are a bit quiet? Okay, thank you, James. Uh, let me see if I can fix that. Oh my god. The voice volume is at max. Then let me do it on OBS. Okay. That should be good. Oh my god. Oh my god. The Witch of Miracles sneered with an evil smile that even a demon would shudder to look at. Yeah, I almost have a fucking headache. You're right, Jitan. Oh god. Even that sneer provoked no response. From Battler's dim eyes. This is the Little Mermaid, isn't it? Beato! Beato! You've gotta come. She's locked in the kitchen or something. Oh god. Renove, you gotta let her out! Oh god. People live for the sake of love! Therefore, today you have fulfilled the purpose of your lives. Oh, how great is the power to live! The power of love! I pray that the brightness of this day blesses us to for all the time, for all time! Just give it a rest already, you demons. What comes next? The couple will now make an oath of eternal love! After that, they will exchange rings! On Battler's hand was a ring bearing the seal of the One-Winged Eagle, proof that he was the territory lord of this world. Oh no! And on Erica's finger was a diamond ring that could not be shattered by any miracle. Diamonds signify an eternal bond. However, in Greek, the word diamond simply meant means unbreakable. Not gonna make a JoJo reference. <sighs> Erica wasn't vowing to love Battler forever. She just wanted to rule over him as her eternal property. This wedding was being performed for the sole purpose of defiling Battler. Oh God! Oh god, this better be the fucking Little Mermaid. This better be the fucking Little Mermaid. Oh god. Oh god. Don't worry. I won't love you forever. After all, the point of this ceremony is to make you submit to me. Your heart will be shut inside an inescapable closed room forever. Where I, Theodore Erica, the detective in which a truth will command it. Your position is territory lord and your ring will become mine. Can't get Come on, Battler, you gotta break free! I know this is not in his own will. I know this is not in his own will. What was that? 
Oh my god. Oh my god, if this is like the Little Mermaid. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can't get out. You are so fucking dead. Seriously, you are so dead, Erica. You are dead beyond dead. When you think you're dead, you're not actually dead, but you you will be even more dead than that when I get through with you. Oh God, you are dead. Oh God, you are so fucking dead. You are deader than dead is dead of dead. Oh God. And I'll remain by your side as your wife forever. Getting to enjoy that look of anguish on your face all by myself. I'll defile you forever! No! That's Beato's way of saying it! Nobody else gets to say it that way! Oh god! You are so fucking dead! You should be a bachelor! <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! I know he's got to be hypnotized. This is the fucking Little Mermaid. And I bet somebody's going to free Beatrice from whatever she's trapped. Oh, God, please, please, please. Oh, God, please, please. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh god, enjoy occultics no maho, please. Oh god. Yeah, this is a great opening, and I think it's the last time we see it. Okay. Oh god, this is what you were waiting for, isn't it? Oh my god. real battler's got to break out of that he's clearly not under his own will oh my god hello dual wisdom the witch of theater going what's that oh my god oh my god hello yeah james I know that marriage would actually freaking factor into the story, James. Oh my god, Chase. Oh my god. Hello, Chrono. Hello, Bats. 
Oh my god, hello Beatrice. I think I might have said hi to some people twice. Oh god. All that could be heard was the sound of the wind. A sound of misfortune bringing sadness and unease to all, the, to all who heard it. Slowly, I came back to my senses. I finally regained consciousness on top of a bed with a firm mattress. Where was this again? I can't remember where this is, but I can vaguely recall that I must not remain here. <sighs> the room was dimly lit. There was a light on, but that just made the darkness and eeriness of this room more apparent. There were no curtains over the window, but it was too dark outside to see anything beyond it. If I squinted into that pitch blackness, it felt as though I could see the Witch of the Forest peeking back at me from the darkness, and I averted my gaze from the window in fear. Where are we? Battler better not be waking up to freaking see... Eric are right next to him in a bed, or I am going to be so pissed off. Oh, God. I can't see or hear it. But I get the feeling that if I leave this room, it'll be bright and warm, and someone else will be there for me. I want to get to where everyone else is as soon as I can. Bad memories from when I was very young began to well up. Horrible, harsh memories of when I started dozing off during a family gathering and was put to sleep in some room I didn't know. I remember waking up there, incredibly lonely and sobbing. I must not remain in this room. I just want to, wish to get out of here quickly. Once that thought crossed my mind, I didn't want to stay in the room a second longer than I had to. I'm scared. It's creepy. Where is everyone? I want to get out of here right now. I opened the door trying to leave the room. A pleasant glow snuck in through the crack of the door. As I thought, the corridor was filled with a comforting light. I couldn't actually hear them, but I could sense that far away, People were enjoying themselves. I'm sure everyone's gathered in the room across from this one. I've been shut up in this lonely, creepy room all alone. I should go, quickly. Holy shit, wow. Look at that. Damn, we all have these graphics now. As soon as I thought this, a merciless metallic sound rang out, and the door refused to open any further. The chain had been set. I'd always hated chain locks. You can open a normal lock just by twisting, but chain locks are built in an annoying way, and I couldn't work them easily. So I've hated them ever since I was very young. See? Even this chain is causing me trouble, and I just can't get it undone. Why is this happening? I just want to leave this creepy room right away. Just on the other side of this thin door, everything is bathed in a warm light. I can't undo it. I just can't undo this chain. The more desperate I grew, the more that unsettling darkness seemed to be closing in on my back, and the more frightened I became. Then I finally noticed. There's something wrong with this chain. Yes, there is a chain, but this isn't a chain lock. This is just a chain stick to the door, into the door, preventing it from opening it any further. In other words, it isn't made to be opened. What the hell's going on? Who'd do something like this, damn it? I think it's Battler, at least. I'm gonna use Battler's voice, because I think it's Battler. No matter what I did, no matter how much I struggled, 
I couldn't pull out the stake or undo the chain or break the mechanism. This door was, was just a demon's mouth, made to trick me into thinking it would open before crushing my hopes. Even so, if only I could just open the door somehow, I could get out into that pleasant corridor. This desire forced me to keep my hand glued to the, to the doorknob. God damn it, apparition! You're making a freaking Zelda CDI reference. Jeez, <laughs> of all times. <laughs> but it was useless. Both the chain and the stake were firm, and no matter how much I clouded them about, there was no chance of the door opening any further. Even though I could see the pleasant hallway through the crack, I had no chance of opening the door any further. Maybe someone will come if I yell. Maybe the door can be opened easily from the outside. When I thought this, I tried to call out to someone, but I couldn't make the words come out. I could mouth someone come here, and no voice left my lips. What's going on? Someone come. Why can't I cry out? Help me, help me, help me. The mere fact that I can't say help me out loud is even scarier. If I turn around, the witch gazing into the room from the darkness outside might be inside the room this time, standing right behind me. I'm frightened. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Someone help me. Someone help me! I can't get out. Can't get out. Let me out of this room. Help me. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Let me out, let me out, let me out. Help me, help me, help me! And we have no, uh, jeez. Okay, there's no title for this. Who's speaking? Oh boy. Who is speaking here? Um, is this Renove? This sounds like they've arrived, lady. And we have no, um,. Who is this? Damn it, there's no freaking name tags. Fuck. Huh? Oh. oh. Oh, we're getting back to Angie. We're getting back to Angie, I see. Okay. All right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, damn! Damn! Okay, it's Amakusa. I was just gonna... I was just about to ask. Oh my god. Alright! Amakusa! Damn, putting the moves on Angie. You're way too old for her. Damn it, Amakusa. <laughs> Amakusa ran his finger down my cheek. In an instant, I awoke from the doze I'd just been in. I glared at Amakusa for waking me up in such a creepy way. But he just pretended not to notice. Angie was supposed to be dead, I guess not. Jeez. I guess that was a lie. Jeez. Unless we're gonna see how that happens here. We get more Angie parts. Where is this? Feels like a parlor in some dignified person's house. But I have no memory of this place at all. Here we go. Profiles changed, I was told. Ushimiya Angie, the final descendant of the Ushimiya family, 12 years into the future. In the middle of her journey to reach Rokunjima, while evading pursuers from the Sumadera family, she is sucked into the world of, of an impossible memory. She reached several truths in the past games and possesses, en possesses enough power to re represent observers. It is said that many witches are fond of her bad attitude, and many of them even... 
have an eye on becoming her master. Oh wow, look at this. We actually get to see all the seven stakes of her own. Damn, that's nice. With the victory of the human side, she should have achieved victory as well, but she seems unable to accept it. It appears that she is less concerned with who actually wins and cares more about how brutal an end might be reached. Yeah, it does seem a bit weird, like the text is overlapping the character model. It does feel slightly off with this engine. I agree, it does feel a bit off. I do like the old one better, although I like that we can uh, see each profile individually. Therefore, hostile towards Battler as he tries to end this peacefully, she attempts to use Erica to ruin this final game. Because the end of the game has been assured with the victory of the human side, she no longer stands in opposition to anyone. As a previous game master, she also knows the truth and has taken a position of non-interference. Now she simply acts as a spectator, enjoying her beloved Burns' contorted expressions. The Endless Sorcerer and Final Game Master! He is ruler of the game board and the territory lord. To prove that he is one Beato's game, he must take on the position of Game Master. By succeeding in this, his victory will be acknowledged, and Beato's game will reach its end. Because he knows the whole truth, he exists on a higher plane than all the others. The Witch of Truth, temporarily. I love that. I bet that drives her nuts, and I revel in that. She is also a detective and calls herself an intellectual rapist. Jeez, remember that one. Participants in Battler's game as the human side player participates. She possesses numerous skills that qualify herself to be a detective, and these can even be elevated to the level of Red Truth when acknowledged by her master, Burncastle. Whether she wins or loses, this will be the last game, and there will be no further use for her. I like the sound of that! Has anything changed for anyone else, I wonder? I think, uh, you know what, let's get back to the story. Beato is gone. Oh god. Where is this? And why am I? You still have a sleep, lady? Yeah, sorry. Where are we? Huh? Apparently, he hadn't expected me to forget something like that just because I wasn't fully awake yet. For once, I agreed with him. Why am I in some parlor that I don't recognize? Oh, by the way, JM Trad, I'm playing this with the, um, with the Witch Hunt translation. So don't worry about that. Jam Trout. I this has this is modded with the Witch Hunt translation, so I'm using Umineko Project, but OA gave me the mod to make this the Witch Hunt translation, so it's gonna be it's useless. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The sound of the footsteps from the they Amakusa had mentioned had come right up to the opposite side of the door. I could hear conversing voices. Is that a woman? Judging by the coffee and snacks laid in front of me, I was the guest here. In that case, I better remember why I came here. Or at least who it was I came to visit. Who am I? Ushermia Angie. Who's the man standing behind me? Amakusa Jusa. The man who used to be my guard long ago. He's now the bodyguard Okonogi assigned to me. 
In that case, is this after Aunt Eva's death? When I've thrown my, off my pursuers? On that journey to find out what happened 12 years ago? Is that how it went? Do I really have a memory like What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Are Angie's memories all jumbled? After a knock, the door opened, and the person I must have come here to meet entered along with an assistant. Oh, wonderful. Even after seeing her face, I can't remember who she is. Our sincere apologies for keeping you waiting. Hachijo Toya is here. That's a relief. The assistant introduced her to me first. And I finally remembered who she was. She? I thought it was a he. Excuse me, but are you... Yeah. Who are you, I wonder? Huh. Let's see. Hachijo Toya, is that her? I wonder who we're... Let's, let's see. I gotta get a, a feel for her voice. That's right. I am Hachijo Toya. Magazines were all talking about your book signing event. Let's see what her profile is. On the Angie side. A message bottle forger. Wait, what? Forger? Wait, what? She is a mysterious novelist. Forger? Huh? And the myst mystery surrounding her outnumber even those found in her novels. Claiming to have found the truth of Broken Jima. She writes new tales and publishes them on the web to give out extra hints. However, I have no memory of meeting her before my trip to Nijima. She is some kind of message bottle forger? Wait, what? Her outfit is beautiful, Sailor Moon, definitely. It really looks cool. Supposedly, a mysterious male author showed up wearing sunglasses and a mask. Never thought you'd be a woman. What's the deal? That was just a double arranged for the edit by for by the editing department. I was a helper standing behind him at the book signing. <sighs> now there is a shock. I haven't read your works. But I'll bet you're even more mysterious than your books. Wait, why is she forging message bottles? What the actual fuck? Readers only pretend to read books. They read them based merely on the name of the author and the brand and think they've actually read them. No matter what I write in my books, they don't truly really read anything. They just pretend to read so they can look smart and knowledgeable and keep up with the current fad. Why on earth should I expose myself to these people? Why indulge such trash? I see. 
Damn, okay, jeez. What the actual fuck is going on? Looks like you're Madam, Madam Hachijo, all right. Jeez. This person really is eccentric. There's no doubt about it. This is Hachijo Toya herself. Hachijo Toya is a mystery novelist who's become the center of discussion lately. It seems her books themselves have been highly praised, but it's her mysterious debut that has attracted so much attention towards her lately. Last year, she managed to win several different awards for exceptional mystery novels offered by multiple large publishing companies, submitting each of her works under a different pen name. And after that, several highly regarded anonymous works were discovered, one after another, to have been stories she had written in the past under false names. And her popularity, popularity soared as she herself became more mysterious in her books. Do you think that's a good voice for her, or is it a bit too old sounding? Uh, just, uh, because I could still change it. It's still early on before I kind of get fixed into it for her. Despite all of this, the author herself never appeared in public. But everything, and everything about her was wrapped in a veil of secrecy. However, just a few days ago, this author finally made a public appearance for a book signing, showing up with a mask that covered his face and drawing even more public attention. And yet, apparently even that had been a fake. Given this person's radically unconventional, unconventional track record, it was hardly a surprise to hear her casually insult her fans like this. I know a lot about you. I know quite a lot about you too, Ushinomiya Anji-san. The talk shows have been saying all sorts of things. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure you've heard nothing but good. Yes. Nothing good at all. Apparently, you employ and five people on a whim. Try to resolve everything with money and care nothing but the law as long as you get your way. Yep, sounds about right. You're quite a badass. No, that's okay, Owe. I, I was, I was too cutie, a bit creepily, sugar. Oh, jeez. I always give her a bit creepy tone. Jeez. However. I happen to like intelligent people like you. Is that why you agree to meet with me? Exactly. When is this happening at all? When in exactly in Angie's journey is this happening? Is this afterward or before? It is. Exactly. You're the only person who's managed to spot that Itoi Kukuro Regunamu is another pen name used by me, Chicho Toya. 
That's actually quite impressive. God damn it, how the fuck do I say that? Oh, that was Angie. It's, God damn it, Ikutoturo Regonamu was a pretty strange pen name. However, if you match the Japanese syllables to numbers, you can read it as 11,0199060576. 11 million, nine. 11 billion, 19 million, 960,576. The massive number is equal to 18 to the 8th power. 18 to the 8th. In Japanese, Toya no Hachijo. Wow, interesting. Or in other words, Hachijo Toya. <laughs> Very well done. I was quite impressed. In fact, I was so impressed I decided to let you meet me in person. Are you a witch? Are you secretly a witch? I fucking swear. Welcome to my mansion, child of man. You, I, I swear, I, I, I swear, you're giving me that vibe. You are giving me that vibe. Her manner of speaking was extremely condescending. And plus, Angie didn't even know how she got there, or something like. But perhaps because of her elegant manner, it didn't feel particularly irritating. This person had a sort of majestic grandeur about her, which made that style of speech seem almost natural. At least, that's how it felt to me. In fact, it felt almost as though this was a manifestation of some noble being. Exactly! Angie! See, Angie and I are on the same page! would have no need to show herself before mere humans under normal circumstances. They, okay, so it's not just me. Thank you, Angie. Angie is getting the same fucking vibe. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. I'm not going crazy. Since I'm not particularly a fan of hers, I get this as proof that her mysterious charisma really is nothing to be laughed at. However, I didn't come here to talk to Hachijo Toya, the mystery, the mystery novelist. I'm interested in Ito Ikukuro Megonamu, the mysterious web author who only released her works over the internet. Around the Japanese parts of the internet, Ito Ikukuro is a extremely famous witch hunter. However, she isn't a big opinion leader like Professor Ut Utsuki. She's one of those message bottle forgers who are always the center of vigorous debate. Seriously? Are people just writing their own Umineko fanfiction in universe? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> what? Are you fucking serious? Do people actually do that in real life? Do people actually write fan fiction of real life events? Like, what am I saying? Of course they do. Like, freaking the Titanic movie is freaking fan fiction of the Titanic disaster, basically. So, yeah, of course they do. Oh, I should. I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have even, like, asked that. I can't believe. <laughs> I, they would probably make a movie of it eventually. Maybe even a visual novel. Jeez. 
Oh my god, chicks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Message bottle forgers are, as the name suggests, people who forge and pose the contest of what purport to be mysterious message bottles detailing the events of the Rokunjima incident. They claim to have discovered a new message bottle and boost either a very similar counterfeit story or a new theory with their own interpretation of the truth, all of which are supposedly written by Ushurami Maria. In, do in so doing, they openly take on the name Ushurami Maria. Writing up new bizarre tales, as if they've been present themselves and knew the truth. They then send these stories out to the, into the newest sea discovered by humankind, the internet, claiming that it's a third or fourth message model. All of the first forgers were, the, were either simple pranksters or crooks trying to swindle collectors. Eventually, though, People who claimed to have solved the riddles of the message bottle tales and reached the truth started to appear, and they started creating original works of their own, third and fourth message bottles from Usher Mia Maria, as though they had moved over to the riddle teller's side. Huh. These people rewrote the tale of the witch with whatever re interpretations they wanted, and every once in a while, parts of their theories would gain big followings on the net. Some of those creations grew to be so widely trusted that they were believed to, con to contain some new grain of truth. The more w rigid witch hunters openly despised these people, calling them forgers, counterfeiter counterfeiters, we're just witches. <laughs> Interesting. Though they claim to have reached the truth, they refused to tell anyone and created fake message bottles as they're testing everyone else. It was no surprise that the more straight-laced witch hunters were seriously annoyed by these forgers. However, among those who simply like to entertain themselves with the occult, Fantasy of Rokunjima. An extremely small number accepted these creations as literary works. Glad of these additions to this mysterious tale. Ito Ikokuro was the most highly regarded of these forgers. The ultimate. Of the Golden Witch. Oh! 
Oh, wait. End of the Golden Witch. Uh, there's no way that... But... I've read that one. Wait, okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute! Okay, theory. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just... Okay, so... This... Okay, so what she's talking about is the game board part. Okay. Okay, so, 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 I just... Okay. I just... Uh, wait, I just... Wait! Ha! Ah, wait! Okay, so... So, 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 Okay, so... It's the game board. Okay, you gotta be a witch. You're a fucking witch. No, Toya Hichijo is absolutely a fucking witch. I fucking know it. No, you gotta be a witch. Angie doesn't even know how she got here. You gotta be a witch, Hichijo. No fucking way around it. I've read that one. That's one hell of a hobby you got there. Killing off other people's families however you like. Did you come all this way just to hear, hear just to say that? Because she surely didn't write the meta world parts into the thing. Because how would they even know about the meta world? How would they even know about the meta world, right? Surely in the message bottles, the message bottles surely don't contain the meta world aspects of what's going on, right? Like, the, the, the message bottles just contain the game board part. I think so. That's got to be because... There's no way that the message bottles contain the the meta world parts of what the story is just the game board. Okay. It still makes sense that way. Surely. Yes. I think not. Final descendant of the Ushinomiya family. In her latest forgery end, she killed off seven members of my family at least during the actual story. Wait, what? Just wait, huh? But no, but Beatrice was alive for those! But Beatrice was alive for those! No way! Beatrice was alive for these two! How? No way! What? No! But Beatrice was alive for those! What the actual fuck is going on? What the, uh, wait, what? But that's him. Did the actual story just end at episode two and everything after that is fucking, I just. I, you. I... How did she make those if Beatrice was alive? I... Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, I just... Okay. Wait, but how? Wait, how, but how? How would she have forged? How would she have forged episode three and four? I just, what? Okay. Clearly, she's just talking about the game board parts. Not the meta world parts, because the meta world parts surely aren't in the in, in the message models. Surely. Surely. Like there's no way the meta world parts are in the message models. I gotta keep going. I just uh... Then she's killed off most of my family in horrible ways, over and over again. Of course, I want to complain. However, all of her works are known for being in both form and level of perfection. The closest tales to those written by Ushurumiya Maria herself. In particular, Ito Yokuro's first forgery, Banquet of the Golden Witch, managed to fit everything, including Ushirami Eva's escape to Kordorian. <sighs> People wondered whether this might be the true story of Broken Jima, and they even made it onto the talk shows. So far, all of these tales have been nothing more than electronic text on the web. However, people will eventually realize that Ito Ikokuro is actually Hachijo Choya. When that happens, they'll become the works of that bizarre Hachijo, and no one will think of them as mere fan creations. People will probably start wondering if this might actually be a third message bottle she found and released under the guise of a story she herself wrote. Okay, you know what? Wait, but how does Battler even know, like... Uh, wait. Oh, God. I just... Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. It might actually be a third message ball she found and released under the guise of a story she herself wrote. When that happens, these stories will probably seem even more bizarre and confusing. You're pretty cunning, aren't you? Why do you say that? You're doing this to make your forgery seem more mysterious and more credible. And what do you mean by credible? Once you've gained credibility, your forgeries will rise to the level of truth. Rise to the level of truth. Okay. If I... She does look like Kaguya Horizon Void Dweller. She does. Okay, you know what? She's got to be a meta-perspective character. And you know why I know this? Because she's a character that is looking straight directly at the audience. Very few characters do this. And I know that in many visual novels, characters that are looking straight at you, like... Our, our, our characters in meta perspective. So she's got to be some kind of a witch of some kind. I know she has to be.
Right, a level of truth. <laughs> How foolish. Bye, Sailor Moon. Have a good time. Such a thing is unnecessary for my works. Are you saying that because your works are truth and not mere forgeries? Correct. They are truth, so there's no need for them to rise into anything. You aren't Maria Onei-chan. You definitely weren't on Rokunjima that day. So how can you be so absurd as to call this the truth? Hey, don't lose your cool, lady. Sh shut up! That makes you think I'm losing my cool! <laughs> <laughs> and she half realized that she let her emotions get the better of her. She let out, out a sigh and shrugged. <laughs> your reason for coming here. Yeah. Okay, you know why I know this? You know why I know that the meta world stuff can't be in there? Can't be in the message bottles? It's because of Angie. How can Angie be here and in episode four at the same time? That doesn't make any sense. So there's no way the meta world stuff is part of the message bottles. Your reason for coming here. It wasn't to yell at me for killing your family several times as I within my forgeries. Correct? Achijo had been smiling at Angie kindly, but in a condescending manner. Or else, like a mother might watch over a very small child. Hello, Uchiha Shadow. Angie realized this and was unable to suppress her irritation. Apparently, Amakusa could tell that Angie was getting worked up. He joked around with her for a bit so they could start the conversation over again from the beginning. The thing you came here to hear. It's the truth that I have reached, is it not? Why are you so sure that you've reached the truth? Because, I, because I've understood all the tales, darling. And I'm asking why you're so sure about that. Yeah, she is, she is constantly looking at the v, uh, at the reader. Like uh, every single one of her sprites is never looking at the other characters, but she is always looking at the. Re She's got to be some kind of magical being. I fucking swear. There is more to her fan fiction, quote unquote, than meets the eye. And Angie realizes it too. Do you think that the sun ever evolved around the earth? Achijo suddenly started talking about the Ptolemaic theory. Angie was about to tell her not to answer questions with more questions, but she quickly realized what Achijo meant. <laughs> Humans used to support the Ptolemaic theory. However, that theory has been rejected in the modern age. Does this mean that at the instant the theory was rejected, 
the, stun, the sun stopped moving and the earth started revolving around the sun. Of course not. The truth doesn't change based on what humans believe. Well, depending on what kind of truth you're talking about, Angie. There's different kinds of truth you're talking about, you know? Are you talking about data or are you talking about the truth that people interpret how things work, you know? In terms of in people's emotions and feelings and things like that. How people feel about certain things or how things even like if you're talking about data then no that doesn't change but data has to be interpreted to make any sense for the human mind so i don't know if i fully agree with that angie data doesn't change but interpretation does and humans can only make sense of interpretation Then right now. Your denial of my truth means exactly the same thing. The idea of heliocentrism was proposed by several scholars before Galileo. However, it was hard to objectively prove that theory using the scientific techniques available at the time. Even so, that didn't change what the truth was. And yet it moves. So you're saying that the truth is still the truth, regardless of whether you can prove it or not. Correct. In the future. Sorry. When the full truth finally becomes known, perhaps sometime in episode 8. People will look back and realize that I had already discovered it. Apparently, Angie just couldn't stand her teacher's attitude. She kept getting irritated, and every time, Amakusa would joke around until she, she said it settled down again. However, there could be no, no mistake that Hachijo was a genius. And it used her extraordinary intuition to form a most interesting outlook on the, onto the events that occurred on that island. Oh, sorry, Dexter. That was why Angie had wanted to contact Ikudo, Ito Ikukudo, and hear her views. Still, this meeting truly had been fortunate for Angie. She hadn't been absolutely sure that Ito Ikukudo was Hachijo Toya. She hadn't thought that the publishing company would really contact the author. And moreover, she hadn't dreamed the mysterious, that the mysterious masked author We'll grant her an interview under such short notice. Notice, jeez. The more she thought about it, the more she realized that the sum of the events leading to this meeting made for nothing short of a miracle. Yes, a miracle. Huh, interesting. After all, in almost all cases, I'd never been co be contacted by the publishing company. and would leave for Nijima the next day. What? No way. Is this an alternate fragment? This must be an alternate fragment to episode four. It's an alternate fragment to episode four, isn't it? 
Oh my god. Burncastle did this! I know Kyrie's voice is more like this. And Achille's voice is like this. So yeah, they're they're a bit similar, but I'm I'll try to differentiate them further. I'd leave for Nijima, then go on to Rokunjima. And then give Onechan a Sakutado stuffed animal. Huh? Why a Sakutado stuffed animal? Whoa! She's oh my god! Angie is like a certain character in Higurashi. Oh my god. She's getting... Oh my god. Hachijo. Oh my god. This is a different Angie than episode 4 Angie. She's got Reading Steiner! Oh my god! She's got Reading Steiner of the other Angie! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the true Reading Steiner, on, like, from, from Tigarashi. Oh my god! My memory of the future is all muddled. My head hurts. Yeah, you are definitely some kind of a witch. You are absolutely a witch. Seriously. It's either a witch or something even more than a witch. Like, seriously. She's got reading Steiner. Just like that character from Higurashi. Hachi just said something about showing Angie something good. Yes, that is something from Stein's Gate. Ramsh. Rose from the sofa and headed for the study desk. When she turned her back, Amakusa asked Angie, who seemed to be troubled by something, if she was okay. Hey, Amakusa. How long have I been here? Huh? You've been looking weird for a while now. What's going on? I can't remember how long I've been sitting here. Yeah, there's something magic going on here. Absolutely. You still have a sleep? That's not it. Yeah, you are totally Okabeing this here. This is totally something Okabe would say. Right here. This is totally a thing Rintaro Okabe would say. Okabe Rintaro would say. Oh my god. I mean, I was able to get an appointment with Professor Utsuki. But that publishing company never got back to me about Ito Kukuro. So in the end, I was stuck and able to do anything that entire day. Right? Huh? Huh? Amakusa, you went to get, go, go get that large black bag, didn't you? Yes, this is so... Damn! Oh god, no, this is... You are totally... Oh my god.
No, you are totally saying it. You are totally fucking... Oh my god. How the... Oh, we have 51 people. You guys are insane. Thank you so much. Oh my god. Seriously, thank you so much for coming here. You went to go get that large black bag, didn't you? That's right. Just before we left for Nijima, Amakusa and I had parted ways just one time. He said something about getting a weapon from a, an acquaintance of his, and he went to go get that large black bag. Okay, so this is uh, actually fitting my sniper team theory from episode 4 for a non-magic way for all those people to die is Amakusa fucking sniped them all to death. Wasn't that today? What am I talking about? I mean, didn't I go to Nijima? Yes! 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 Angie! You! Angie, shake hands with the Okabe Rintaro! You have officially changed world lines. Oh my god. Okay. Absolutely. So that... Okay. Didn't I go to Nijima? How could she even know these people if there's no magic in the world? Meet Captain Kawabata and inside the bed shop. Exactly! What? Something wrong. Did my confusion and uncertainty make, uncertainty make me sigh out loud? Even though Hachijo's back was to me, she slowly turned around and smiled as though she had peered into my heart. Well, Doi and Higurashi, somebody helped. Is a character... From, if one character from Higurashi is here, then maybe another one is too. No, it's nothing. Strange memories. Ones that even I can, can't understand. I tried to hide my confusion, but for some reason Hachijo had a strange glint in her eyes, as though she could read my mind! Okay! Hachijo! You did this. These forgeries are more than just forgeries. She is able to see the real fragments too. She's got to be magic. These forgeries are not just forgeries. For some reason, Beatrice only made two actual message bottles. But for whatever reason, she's picking up the slack. Uh. Undoing the rest of the game boards. Is she like an ally of Beatrice? These forgeries are more than just forgeries. These are real fragments that she can observe because she is... Probably a witch on the level of friggin' Burncastle or even higher. She might even be a creator class witch. She's basically God. In other words. She, if she is even seeing this. She's prob... Whose side is she on, though? Whose side is she on? If she's making more message bottles, is she trying to help Beatrice? But why did Beatrice only make two? Why did she stop at game three? She's got- there is way more to her. She is not just n a normal human being. There is no way. Like, Angie is now his reading Steiner, like, character from Higurashi that I'm not going to name. 
Oh, please, OA. Jeez. <laughs> well, yeah, there's Burncastle's side, and then there's Battler and Beatrice's side. Is she for or against Burncastle? Is she trying to help Beatrice or not? And Battler or not? I just... And you... She... Is she like... Wait a minute. Child of man. You... I swear, if she says oh, 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 at any point, then if she says that at any point, I fucking swear. Oh my god. Okay, if she says that at any point. Okay. She is too. She must have given Angie of Reading Steiner, the Angie of this fragment, just like that Higurashi character gave to that other Higurashi character. I have revived and killed your family several times within various forgeries. <laughs> Almost like a witch knight. Yeah, I bet! Reviving them and killing them whenever you like. Endlessly. Sounds almost like Beatrice, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, please follow the lead of all these people on the web. And consider the possibility that I might be a witch. She took a thickly packed brown envelope out of a locked drawer. It appeared to be filled to the brim with printing paper. Perhaps there was a mangus this was a manuscript for one of her works. The neat letters written with a fountain pen on the envelope spelled out the word Dawn. There was no forgery by the name of Dawn, which must mean Angie could tell this was a new one. Hachijo's newest unreleased forgery. Dawn of the Golden Witch. She's observing them from the world of fragments and writing them down. But for what reason? She is not just creating these out of her head. She is observing them through the world of fragments. Yeah, I'll fucking bet. Uh, you definitely are a witch. For one such as I, who knows everything. Everything is boring. However, I don't dislike letting the ignorant read my works to see what kind of reactions they have. And so I want you to read it. You want me to read your newest work, which you've created as the new Endless Witch? Correct, child of man. Whether you resent it or admire it, you can help me forget my illness for a time. You. You're absolutely a witch. 
Let's put an end to this farce, shall we? Oh my god, you gotta be a witch. You've gotta be a witch. I fucking swear, you've gotta be a witch. Who are you? I don't remember ever meeting you like this. Oh, we're getting that? Yep! Higurashi sound effects in the background here. Ryukushi must have done this on purpose. Higurashi sound effects time. Yes, I did try to contact Hachijo Toya. But in the end... I never got a chance to meet her. In other words, all of this is a falsehood. Actual fuck. How does An this Angie know what a piece is? Does she share memories with the piece Angie too? Does she? She must have reading Steiner from the piece Angie as well, then, doesn't she? Sorry, but if you can think you can tame Ushirami and Angie so easily... You're making a big mistake. <laughs> yes, I'd hoped you'd be this interesting. Oh my god. You're right, Matt. She has memories of both Peace Angie and real world Angie from us of four. <laughs> <laughs> she finally couldn't hold it back and burst out laughing. Gradually, the space around them seemed to be filled with a strange purple mist. The room itself seemed to twist and bend. <gasps> Her figure also twisted, and after something that couldn't be described elapsed, her form changed to become just what she had called herself, a witch. What? <gasps> what? You! You are one of her race! You are! I called it! I fucking called it! You! I fucking called it! You! You are one of her race, and it looks like you're a freaking high ranker, too! With a freaking badge here! Oh my god! And you're not a kid like, like the other one was! Oh my god! Oh my god, you're a full grown one, didn't aren't you? You're even wearing the same type of clothing. Splendid. You did well to see through my veil. I'm 
It seems I'm the type which is just left to cling to. This is something from Higurashi, but I'm not going to spoil it. You all have that same condescending tone towards humans. I figured you were a witch right away. Angie! Yes! Me and you both! I was right to give you my voice. The novelist sitting on the sofa was nowhere to be seen. Even Angie's bodyguard, who was supposed to be around at times like this, was gone. It was only a non-human figure, relaxing in a large, ornate rocking chair. I find you truly interesting, intriguing, child of man. Your charming nature is the perfect medicine for my boredom. Yeah, well, I don't see anything charming about this. Why am I alive? So this is peace, Angie. So I got it backwards. I got it backwards. Okay. This is peace, Angie. With the memories of... Of real world Angie from episode 4. I got it backwards. This chapter is nothing but a gigantic mindfuck. Oh my god. Wasn't I killed in a pretty nasty way for breaking the rule about revealing my name? To be honest, I did doubt that those people would let me go so easily. What kind of farce will I be forced to go along with this time? I really don't care. I'll just do whatever I can within the bounds of the role they give me. Whatever I can to help Oni-chan. Of course, I understand. Even if he wins, he'll never come back to me. Even so, I'll struggle on. I'll make sure Onichan comes back to the me of that day. You go, Angie! No need to lose your temper. I am not asking you to be a peace. Do you guys think that the game voices are a bit too low? Because I think the game voices are a bit too low. There is one way I can think to alleviate that. I'm gonna just, um... Uh, and that is to um, reduce the volume of the in-game music while overall increasing the volume of the audio output in OBS. That is the only thing I could think to do, because the in-game voices sound a bit soft to me. And just see, okay, so let's get to configuration. It's interesting, this volume doesn't really change it too much. That volume slider really doesn't change it all that much. Even though I'm, I put it halfway through.
Okay, so now I put the audio output a bit louder. So, uh, hopefully you guys can, um, hear the voices louder. Actually, that's a bit too loud. Okay, so now the voices should come through louder for you guys, hopefully. Then why did you summon me here? Don't tell me you want me to read this new story or whatever it is you've written. That's it, exactly. I do not want you to be my peace. You've always been a mere observer. And I have no intention of sticking my neck into their game. I don't get it. What is it that you want from me? I increased in no BS. Uh, so... Hopefully the voices will come through louder for you guys. Okay, G Chan, I hope you get better. See you. What is it that you want from me? I knew it! She is looking at the fragments that Beatrice wrote. Or rather, has woven. Ugh. She is looking at and then writing them down. But why? What is her reason for doing this? An observer of the fragments Beatrice has woven. An observer? I don't really get it, but no deal. What is she trying to accomplish by making more message bottles? And furthermore, why did Beatrice only write message bottles of the first two games? And why did T Hachijo Toya have to pick up the slack? An observer? I don't really get it, but no deal. In the past. I observed the fragments through Batless eyes. However, now that he has exceeded the position of Game Master, he is not a suitable observer. I am following this tale with true and earnest intentions. It would be such a waste to observe it through the eyes of Battler as he is now, like reading a detective novel backwards. Oni-chan is the game master? Oh yes, a lot happened while you were away. And uh, yes, by the way, you know that witch that he you, you wanted to kill so badly? Well, I think he wants to screw her now, so... Um, yeah, that's a thing now. What on earth are you talking about? You must have no clue what it's all about. You want to know, don't you? I want to know, too. What kind of tale will Battler weave now that he have taken the position of Game Master? So she is just being an observer here. She is just on an even higher plane. Just wanting to be an observer. She took peace, Angie. And saved her from death. And gave her the memories of real world Angie. And is basically acting as, a, as an observer for the games. So she's almost from our pers er, perspective here. 
She's like a foil for the reader. Like she wants to know what's gonna happen. But she doesn't want to look at it from Battler's perspective because that would be cheating. Basically. Fathomal. I was to search for the truth Battler reached as part of my own mental journey. My illness affects me gravely. My ill if I do not think, I cannot even keep my heart beating. So I love Angie's attitude. You want me to read your new picture book aloud to you? So you You might as well interpret it that way. In exchange, you will also be able to take part in your own journey of the mind. I do believe that even you have yet to reach the truth. I think you want to continue on the journey to find that truth. I don't know you a goddamn thing. Do not push your luck. Are you aware of what I could do to you? I could literally bl blink and you would have never been born. I just don't want to spare the effort. I can be lenient at times, but such cases are rare. <laughs> Angie hadn't yet reached the truth either, though she knew that the game was little more than a toy for the amusement of those witches. She wanted it to resume, so she could follow the tale and close in on the king called Truth. Okay, so Peace Angie did not die in episode 4 and was saved by Hachijo. And now she's in this magical area here with Hachijo, who is an observer, one of the observers of the world of fragments. I see. I might explore the tale to find the truth for myself. But I have no obligation to read it aloud until the end for your sake. Understand? Angie was willing to read the story aloud, but she could quit at any time if this witch made her mad. She was in effect, warning the witch not to annoy her. Of course. Also, could you do the voices for the characters? Really? You really want me to do the voices for all the characters? Well, I don't think it's very much trouble. You, you call it a picture book, but to me, it is the only medicine for a fatal illness. I could not take that medicine without you to assist me. In other words, it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. So, you're telling me to read you a book until you fall asleep. And in exchange, you'll let me read it too. Is that right? Precisely. If you are willing to accept, I shall ask that you become my reader for a time. Well, it's nice to get my own title, but all you really want me to do is read books, right? 
私の朗読者であるということは私の使いであるということ。Becoming my reader Become, means the same as becoming my familiar. Oh, what are the kids calling it nowadays? Oh, yes, furniture. すなわち、そなたへの干渉は私への干渉。In other words, what is done against you will be done against me. You are about to become an emissary of a higher level being. 私はベアトリーチェの物語の続きを読みたいという唯一の興味を何者にも邪魔されることを許さぬ。I will not permit anyone to disrupt my only interest. How about being to read the rest of Beatrice's tale? So, Nata, O Motea Sonda, Berun Castelmo, Lambda Delta. This is the track that's very similar to Higurashi. I will not let it burn castle, Lambda Delta. Muron, Beatrice Saimo, Sonata ni taish de issai no kyose ryo kuo motsu koto wa yurusana. Or even Beatrice force anything upon me. This witch seemed to have an almost divine quality to her. Spoke both, spoke both quietly and forcefully. There was no threat in her words. However, even so, It was clear that she was on a different level than Burncastle and on the other witches. And not at all to be taken lightly. Yup! Yup, this is. This whole freaking chapter is basically Higarashi reference. Basically, yup. This whole chapter. I know exactly what type of being you are. You are Hachijo. So, you'll offer me protection if I agree to read your book? Of course. What I want for you is to read aloud to me. Also, do character voices and occasionally comment on your thoughts on the story. I will not spare any who attempt to stand in my way of in the way of that. If my attitude seems arrogant to you, allow me to apologize, child and man. I am this, I am this, I am this, I am this. It may not seem so, but I am speaking to you with the utmost respect. Mitai ne? Yeah, probably. So no majora shi kucho sae. Noera, anta no naka dewa, zu hyaku nen buri ni mise to kei itte kanji ga suru wa. Even that witch-like style of speech feels like it's got to be the most respectful thing you've said in the last few hundred years. So nata wa hon wo yom toki, hon ni. よろしくお願いしますと語りかけてから表紙をめくるか。Or Jam Chad, you could think that it's me, I'll do an Angie's voice reading to, reading to Hachijo. So, does this whole let's play could just be me reading as Angie to Hachijo? <laughs> this whole let's play could be canon. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Obviously. When you're reading a book, do you tell it thank you very much before flipping through the pages? So you could do it. I guess it is like that. I understand. Just by agreeing to have a conversation with Angie, she was showing an incredible amount of respect and willingness to compromise. Angie shrugged, but she also nodded to show her consent. Sure. I'll be your reader. Yeah, 
I get that you showed a ton of respect, just by asking for my consent first. You understand well, child of man. My name's Angie. Not child of man or whatever. <laughs> Very well. As proof of my respect for you, I will acknowledge your name. For her, acknowledging humans' names was like acknowledging the names of all the leaves scattered across the ground. So her acknowledging Angie's name was a miracle. No, it was immensely good fortune. From this point forth, Ushiromiya Angie will serve as Rita and Miko. Oh. That's her name! <gasps> Wait, Miko! Oh my god, so you absolutely are the same race! You are the same race! Oh my god, as a certain person in Higurashi! Oh my god! If Angie is your Miko, oh my god! With service, Rita and Miko, to the Witch of Theatre Going, Featherine Augustus Aurora. What, what yeah, green truth, damn. And what a, what a noble and regal sounding name. Until you finish reading. I shall bring calamity to all who attempt to hinder your task. The first two letters of her names are AU, yes. When the witch of theater going, Featherine, spoke this, Angie was wrapped in a bright light. Oh wait, Featherine got it. Oh, I forgot. Holy shit, look at her. Yeah. Damn, she is like a character on freaking Oh my god. She is a character on a whole nother level. She is basically the same as a certain character from Higurashi, but she is an adult. And to be an adult of that race must be... She is like a god among gods. Holy shit. Featherine Augustus Aurora. How regal sounding. The majestic witch of theater going. Drama and spectating. She is tired of life after a thousand years and constantly repeats the cycle of life and death. In the past, she serves as the master for numerous games. As, as a legendary witch, but her legend, glory, and memory have already disappeared into the past and have been forgotten. Only the solemn metal she wears in her chest retains those memories. Miko is, oh, uh, everybody, okay. I think we all know what a shrine maiden is. It's a shrine maiden. You can read that if you want. Um, but yeah, she's basically a shrine maiden. And to anyone who has read Higurashi, you know exactly what the relationship between Angie and Featherine is if you've, re if you've read Higurashi. Oh, you can scroll down? God damn it. Jesus Christ. Fucking hell, I forgot. Jeez. The horseshoe shaped object floating around her head is a memory aid device. I thought it was horns. Ah, oh, jeez. It records her name, appearance, and other aspects of her personality. 
She was so old that she would not be able to preserve her own individuality without this. Unbelievable. I thought it was horns. Damn. Holy shit. Certainly looks like horns. I wonder if that's what the horn is. In, um... For the other character in Higurashi, too. Interesting. Huh. I wonder. And she didn't feel any particular change herself. But she definitely had been given something that only non-humans could sense. It signified that from this point forward, Angie would be the witch of theater going subject. That didn't mean that Angie would gain some sort of special power. But at the very least, it probably meant that anyone wanting to cause her harm would first have to take on Featherine herself. Your name is pretty long. Sounds like some Roman person from the history books. What should I call you? There is not familiar with me call me Augustus Aurora. Really, the character in Higurashi I am thinking of, his name is close to the word of feather. Interesting. Very interesting. That fits very well, doesn't it, then? After all the respect you've shown me, it's only fitting that I respond in kind. I'll call you Featherine. Any problems? None at all. For an ailing witch such as myself, even being called by my first name would be an experience to be treasured and pondered over. Child of man. Have a name. It's Angie. So you yaritorisaimo, kokochiokikana. Even conversations like this are pleasant every once in a while. Angie, Waka Miko. Angie, my Miko. Angie accepted her role. She would observe this story with the Witch of Theatre going. The curtain was rising on the sixth tail. Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god, look at these animated butterflies. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay, how long have we been streaming here? Two hours and 13 minutes. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. I just, this is incredible. What an opening. And I love this track, by the way. It's perfect for Erica's arrogant, like, asshole personality. Oh my god. And I love, the, like, the beat it gets on the second verse here. Seriously. <sighs> okay, you guys. You know what? I, I, I'm just having a big scare about my health recently, so 
we did one chapter. Uh, unless, um, I have a feeling if I go further in this, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to want to, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Do you want me to keep reading or do you want, do you guys want me to keep reading or do you want me to, um, do you want me to stop for here for today? I'll leave it up to a vote for you guys. I think uh, I think I might actually stop for today. So, because even though it's a bit short, I think that uh, I got a bit scared. You know, I just recovered from sickness, so I do want to take it a bit slowly. Yeah, I'll be going for another two hours. I want to. Fi fi yeah, I figure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true, Zia-san, Yeah. Two hours and 15 minutes is pretty good. And yep, a new save file, a new save screen here. It's gonna be so weird getting used to this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's so weird doing a shorter stream. Okay, you guys. Total clicks. I don't know why it saves the amount of times you've clicked. Jeez. <laughs> okay, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. I didn't think, honestly, we'd get everybody back. But we got the 50 back at, like, 55... Seriously, that's the, apparently the new normal, which is just insane. And like, I just, at peak, obviously. And I just, you guys are just amazing. Thank you all so much for coming, especially after the break due to my illness. And lip sync looks like it's gonna win, yep. So next time, unless there's a big upset, uh, be prepared for lip sync. Yeah, unless there's a big upset in the bowl, be prepared for lip sync. So, okay, you guys, Jeez. let's um, at a break for today. As if someone else will see those stats, exactly, Ramsh. All right, so in two days, again, barring um, illness and stuff like that, I will have to say, so long. Farewell, Avrita Zane, good night. You're all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.